Galaxy Fraulein Yuna is a franchise that fits right at home on the PCFX, featuring cute armored girls who banter about with some lighthearted humor and a little touch of eroticism. Thankfully, the first two titles released on the PC Engine have been fan translated, so if you want to explore this series in general, those are probably great places to start. I personally haven't played either, though whether you've looked at those original titles or not, Figuring out if or how you should approach the PCFX release in the series is a complicated question. Galaxy Frala Yuna FX is a bizarre thing as it's not really its own game. In the mid 90s, there was a two episode OVA for the series. Taking place after the original PC Engine titles, it tells a short tale about Yuna, who typically is the savior of the universe, being framed as a villain. It's pretty straightforward and was localized back in the 90s, so chances are, if you've been a fan of this series in the West for a while, this is where you started. The PCFX release is actually that OVA repurposed into a linear adventure game taking the animation, compressing it down, while also breaking out certain static frames to offer short dialogue choice sections. These selections have no consequences on the story itself. Instead, they simply act as little audio bonuses where Yuna provides additional commentary on a scene or has like an in-world outtake. Otherwise, it's almost exactly the same as the OVA with no real deviation. Because of that, there are very few ways to get lost or stuck. Now, there are some distinct aspects that Yuna FX offers. Probably the most appealing is that there are a series of mini games that are spread throughout the plot as extensions of the story's events. Having to throw Yuna at a boat using the power meter is a fun distraction, complete with cute chibi character sprites. A flight sequence traveling through space and a couple of one-on-one -on -one RPG combat encounters are pretty neat as well. The idea of supplementing an OVA with playable events is kind of fun, but the execution is often poor. Now those previously mentioned minigames are the best realized examples of this concept, yet still can feel overly shallow. However, the other minigames are a significant step down in quality. The block puzzle, game of speed, and memorization game feel more like padding since they have no relation to what's happening. The balance of these also vary wildly, ranging from ridiculously easy to so hard that you'll have to cheat to get past. Thankfully, most of these are straightforward. If you do need some help, some in-game resources can provide details on controls. I found machine translation using a phone app camera tool to be plenty capable of dissecting these and giving you the general idea of how each works. Paul Daniel has also uploaded the manual to archive.org, which includes those instructions as well. However, there are still some pain points where the specific mechanics aren't particularly clear. I put together a quick guide on my website for any issues I ran into, like what outfit is needed to dress up Yuna to move the plot forward, or how to deal the final blow on bosses in the two main encounters. Now, there's also a significant chunk of this game that technically has exploration. Yuna is locked on a spaceship where she has to navigate through pre-rendered hallways to activate terminals. These computers unlock doors so she can ultimately get on an elevator to reach the floor below. Now there is some backtracking, though there is little room to get lost. Whenever a lock releases, an intercom announcement plays, acting as a great audio cue to let you know to recheck the locked doors. It is good to be careful in this section because some menu selections will restart replayable minigames. These are often long and annoying to complete, and what's worse is that you'll need to win to exit them. Or you can restart your console and load up your last save, which thankfully, autosaves occur frequently. There's very little benefit to this maze sequence, though it does present a neat perspective to some of the OVA scenes as Yuna herself watches them on a computer system. These normally don't involve her, so they give her an opportunity to comment on them. Unfortunately, it isn't always consistent with this perspective either way, so the illusion doesn't hold up across the board. Yuna will appear in scenes that she's technically watching from a recording, or she won't be present at all in other scenes, but you as the player still see them. So who really benefits from playing Yuna FX? I think it comes down to if you're interested in seeing a technical showcase for the system. There's a good amount of animation, tons of voice acting, some cute high quality sprite art, and a gallery with concept art along with photographed merchandise. But if you're here to learn more about the world of Yuna, 
There's little to no deviation from the OVA plot. Watching it largely gives you the experience of playing this title without the minigame headaches. I would recommend still watching it first though, since I personally had issues with machine translation giving enough details to really follow the events scene by scene. On the flip side, watching it ahead of time means there is significantly less reason to play this release to begin with. Yuna FX probably makes more sense to somebody who knows enough Japanese that they can treat it as an alternate option to consume this story rather than a companion piece. Aside from the few minigame hiccups that I highlight solutions for in my guide, it's pretty much a straight shot from start to finish here. Machine translation is helpful, but the English OVA is the ideal way to either replace this title or get more context for jumping in. All in all, as a tech demo for the PCFX, it definitely hits all the system's strengths. Just the execution of the game itself is poor. If you're interested in the Yuna franchise as a whole, I'd recommend checking out Emily Dory's video on the first two games and this one. If you want more videos about playing PCFX games from an English speaker's perspective, check out my playlist where I give my general advice as well as tips on individual games.